SNES Drunk. Hey everyone, welcome back to SNES Drunk Plays Final Fight. And this time we are on the west side, where evidently there are many advertisements for the restaurant titled Restaurant. Or are those windows? Are those supposed to be windows? I, mean, they, I always thought they were posters. I just realized they might be windows with, with no customers in them. Well, why would there be customers at a restaurant where there's a lot of fights outside? Anyway, yeah, this is uh, the game gets, starts to get a little bit harder here. This is where, ugh, this is where the game really shows its true. Oh shit! There we go. That was that was nifty. Oh god, cheap shot to the back of the head. When a game, when a beat 'em up bogs down like this with lots of people, oh, with lots of people on the either side of the screen. Fuck. Did not want to die there. Um. It really, the gameplay really needs to be slick in that you're able to flip between the left and the right very smoothly, very quickly. Uh, Final Fight does this very, very well, as good as any beat em up on the Super Nintendo. Like the actual mechanics of getting everybody on one side of the screen is done very, very well. As well as any beat em up, I think, in this game. That's why when people talk about like, well, it's it's the ar it's not the arcade port and blah blah blah, it's like the game still plays fantastic. So it doesn't have multiplayer. So they changed some of the names, and so you can only have three bad guys on the screen at the same time. It's still the the mechanics are still there for a good game. And there's the sound of cracking somebody in the skull with a pipe. Oh, that never gets old. It's like freaking hitting a baseball. And of course, I'm a big fan of, you know, really stupid enemies in games where, oh, that guy's got a big freaking pipe. I'm just going to keep getting up and just walking at him. <laughs> I'm just going to stand here with my back towards him as he, as he walks towards me and brutalizes the back of my skull with a giant cartoonishly oversized pipe. That's cool. There's going to be another 10 versions of me spawning later in this level anyway. <laughs> anyway, like the last episode, I'm going to try, while I'm playing this game, read this. Uh, read the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the Super Nintendo Player's Guide notes about this game. And there have been some really interesting and amusing notes about this game so far. Like the Andorre family fortune that they earned as a family circus over in Eastern Europe before they tragically got tied into the the Mad Gear crime gang here on the, in Metro City. I would play an Andorre family game. Where they have like circus side quests and shit. No, I don't know. I'm just talking out my ass. Okay, here we go. We've got G Andorre and U Andorre. And if you're not careful, you will get trapped and you will die just like I just did. You gotta grab one of the weapons right away, and I failed to do that. And then just go to town on these motherfuckers. You know, my gr my brother and I, when we first played this as kids, we used to joke. It's like, oh, it's Grandpa and Uncle Andore, huh? Even though they look exactly like the the other two Andores. It's the same sprite, just with different different clothes. They actually are Grandpa and Uncle Andore. That's exactly what they're named. <laughs> and it says Uncle Andore resides on the west side. When you come crashing into his home turf, he'll be looking for a fight. This brawler has perfected the Andorre. Ugh. This Andorre. The Andorre body slam. It's funny. Like, <laughs> who would have thought a beat em up like this had put this much thought into this game? I mean, all you're doing is punching stuff. See, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, being able to flip. A guy on, on one side, that's the key to, to doing well in these games, is getting everybody on one side. If you get surrounded, you're fucked. That's when you get, that's when you lose lives. Get out of my way, bread. Slow ass, pathetic bread. And Doug. Looks like Doug just dug his own grave. <laughs> I know. Kill me. <laughs> Anyway, what else can I say about these guys? I'm interested in learning what this guide has to say about J and uh, 2P. Because those guys are really, really annoying. Okay, they're listed as fast fighters. 
And I can take care of this guy while reading. The speedy but weak faction of Mad Gears is made up by two brothers in crime. Shit. And that's one of them right there, Jay. If you lay a hand on them, these guys will go down. The problem is that they're sometimes sneaky. They come in with a group of fighters and get their shots in when you're busy fighting the other guys. See, it's good that the game has a good balance of bad guys. Like, there's speedy guys, there's big brutish guys, there's strong guys. And then there's Edie here, the boss. Eddie, I... I have no idea if he's part of the band that did that before I get too deep song from the early 90s. What I am! Yeah, once you finally get a health bar on him, he just fucking gets a gun and shoots you. Wow, that was really easy. That's probably the... F I swear to God, that's the fastest I have ever beaten him. Here I am just rambling about fucking early 90s pop songs. What is her name? Eddie, Edie and the somethings? Eddie and the somethings? I don't remember. Is that chick? That song? Beavis and Butthead saw the video? And... Never mind. Now we have moved on to the Bay Area. And you got a nice background there of, of Metro City. And I like how they dirty up the, the foreground here with trash everywhere and graffiti on the bench. Nice touch there. You know, I do like how these uh, slow guys, these bread Simons all dress Doug here. It's like, how much you bench? Oh, I don't know how much you bench. Oh, I bench like 550. How much you bench? Oh, I like 520. Yeah, but how many squats can you do? Uh, one. It's like every day is bench press day in the gym in the, in the final fight universe except for these guys this is these guys every day is beer and pizza day beer and hamburger day damn it i like that dog back there just because it's it's not even looking at you it's just kind of barking incessantly it's one of those little rat dogs that just doesn't shut up just yip 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 I hate those fuckers. Oh, we got we got the triple threat here. We got three Wong Hoos. I don't know if there's some kind of like genetic disaster, disastrous experiment. Three Wong Hoos. Damn it, we only wanted two Wong Hoos. What are we gonna do with three of these guys? Gotta open a fucking ramen shop and just feed them everything inside. Uh oh, we got more Andores here. The, the wallet chain empire people. <laughs> and I got a pipe, though. Check this out. You guys want to see my pipe? Pipe. Oh, fuck you. That's so cheap. Okay, here we go. Anyway, what does it say about... There are some interesting tips about opening barrels and opening... Uh, you, uh, just... just uh, those, uh, like those three barrels you just saw me come across there. The guide does say, while you may feel compelled to open a container as soon as you see it, you should wait until all the crooks in the area have been dealt with. If a container is in view, they'll only come out two at a time. I guess that's the guide like saying, the graphics engine can't handle that many objects on screen at once. Just pretty, it's a diplomatic way of saying this game is too limited, so leave the barrels there. That's pretty, <laughs> pretty interesting. What else does it say here? Well, I gotta deal with these fuckers. You know, I've seen Simons on the screen a lot more than anybody. Let's take a look. His attack is ranked as C. His defense and speed are B, so he doesn't totally suck. He only only his attack sucks. And I just got a free guy. That's cool. So Simon's, get out of my way. I already read about these guys. Whoa, damn! I'm about to die again. It says this fighter can actually fall three times before he's out, and it's a good thing because he falls a lot. Sick burn. Speaking of sick burn, I just got freaking wasted. so satisfying to be punching three people at the same time, but you only have one fist. 
You come out, it's not like you're Goro. Uh oh, music change. Shit's getting serious. We got uh, people hanging out in the bathroom stalls here. Would you want to take a shit in that stall? I take. I might. I might. I feeling. If I was feeling adventurous or maybe just too drunk, I'd take a shit in the one with the broken door. Then again, you know, maybe not. This this is the type of bathroom. It looks like it might have a, gl a glory hole or five. So you know what? On second thought, no thanks. I think I might just keep walking. I might say hi to Slash. Again, mechanics here are very well done. You're, you got to be able to flip guys on one side, get everybody on the same side of the screen. Right, right here, boom, perfect. The game's mechanics for that are just really well done. Fucking J. See if, if if there's any difference between J and 2P here. Uh, J. Da, 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 da. <laughs> the last sentence in Jay's description is, "You've got more important things to do than mess around with this loser." <laughs> Love this this guide's disdain for its own characters. Very cool. The only thing that sets 2P apart from J is the color of his coat. Okay, so they're exactly the same. Damn it. There we go. That's more like it. Wish you could pet that dog right there. <laughs> I'm a big dog weirdo. If this game were punching dogs, I would not be playing it. In fact, I think, is it Final Fight 3 that has dogs charge at you? And you have to punch them? Or is it Iron... Co no, I'm thinking of Iron Commando. That game has dogs charge at you, and you literally shoot them, or punch them, or hit them with a, or stab them with a knife. And I'm like, wow, I, I don't, you know, that's that's really shitty. Yeah, I, like I said, I'm a big dog weirdo, obviously. Let's see who's coming up here. We got motorcycles and shit. We got Hollywood throwing out Molotov cocktails. What's it say about Hollywood? In order to be true to his name, Hollywood tends to be quite a showman. Get rid of these guys here. Yeah, it doesn't say much about him. We're coming up on a really annoying part of the game here. Where it's... God, get fucking... Ah! These guys are so annoying. There we go. You gotta hit him with the knee and then finish him off with the punches. After Hollywood here, this Hollywood barrage, I think we get two in a row. That idiot just walked into his own Molotov cocktail. That was a... Tells you the kind of freaking brain surgeons we're working with here. Wouldn't want to see one of these guys try and drive one of those motorcycles in the background there. Probably wouldn't even be able to get it started. Duh! Take a ride, Slash. Of course, nine-year-old me was so impressive. Or impressive. Yeah, it was really impressive. Nine-year-old me was very impressed with the fact that this game had characters named... Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> so is that guy. I'm not alone. Um, no, the... Uh, ooh. Yeah, this is the hard part. This is the hard part. You got lots of Hollywoods, lots of Elgatos, and check it out. Once you kill one... Damn, this is tough. Once you, yeah, they fall from the fucking sky with knives in their hands. Now, if that's not video game violence at its finest, I don't know what is. You got knives laying on the ground. You got dudes with knives strapped to their belts. You got dudes with knives in their hands flying from the sky. Some good old-fashioned video game violence. You don't see very much of that nowadays. Look at that. Violence with a cartoonish, like almost a Tom and Jerry quality to it. And I died again. Yeah, this you're going to lose a couple lives here. This is tough. These guys are tough. They have a lot of life. And they're fucking aggressive as hell. Look at that. Oh, my God. Ugh. Oh, and I got a guy back, at least. But anyway, like I was saying, um, Slash and Axel. This game has guys named Slash and Axel. I was a ginormous Guns N' Roses fanboy as a kid. So I was like, that's the coolest thing ever, because it's just like Guns N' Roses. And yeah. I liked Slash a hell of a lot more than I liked Axel, but 
It's like, how can I punch Slash? He's like my hero. Why doesn't Slash go stand on a piano and play an awesome guitar solo? Ugh. Nothing, nothing. And then we get the barbecue and inside an oil barrel. Always healthy, nutritious. Might be a little extra extra carbon to help tenderize, or extra oil to help tenderize that meat. There we go. Get everybody on the same side. No, I did notice there's a timer at the, at the top there. I've never, I've played this game a hundred thousand times. I've never once run out of time. In fact, I can't remember an instance of ever seeing anybody run out of time on a stage in this game. So I, I don't know what purpose that serves at all. <laughs> if it ever had, if any, if it's ever happened to anybody else, let me know. I mean, how could you possibly run out of time? The game is nagging you to go to the right, like go, go, go. Let's see, is there anybody else I can look up here? We're bogging down here. Hey, Jake, what does Jake say? Jake is no brick wall, but he's a little more durable than Bread and Doug. Okay, nothing much about him. What does it say about Axel and, Sla Axel and Slash, since we're talking about him? Axel, this guy's no rock star. He's just another fighter on the streets of Metro City with a bad attitude. And Slash, it says... Oh yeah, they do, of course, they're totally aware of the Guns N' Roses aspect. With a name like Slash, you'd expect this guy to have a knife or at least a guitar. He's empty-handed, though. And... There we go. And really not that hot before he can move in with a few quick socks before he tries every anything. There we got the old Metro City Statue of Liberty there. Are we coming up on boss time here? Almost. This is a very, very long stage, in case you can't tell. We're pushing well over 15 minutes so far. I don't understand why this, uh... Why this stage is so damn long. I might as well get this, because it's... I don't need it, but it's... It's points. And then there's this boss. If you don't have at least six lives, you will die. Because this guy is impervious to almost every attack. You know how you go after every other fucking boss by just walking underneath him and grabbing him? This guy, it doesn't work so often. This guy overpowers everything you do. You have to die and then go into an invincible status and then grab him and then knee him. Ooh, I got lucky with a weapon there. Let's see if that I can grab that. And you also do have the... Oh, my God. You do have the benefit of having other people in the, in the way that you can throw at him. But those guys don't last. There we go. See what I'm talking about? The knife is useless. The knife does nothing. And he just fucking... Look at that. You try and kick him. This boss is not fair. There we go. Got him that time. So you... Oh. So you have to have a lot of lives before you face this guy. Because your only chance is to go into an invincibility status and grab him. He just... Otherwise, you got no... Like, how the hell are you... What are you supposed to do? There we go. You just wait to die before he... Bef oh my god. I haven't even gotten any damage on him yet. Am I gonna do this? Oh, there we go. I got damage on him now. Fuck you. Oh, come on. That didn't even register. My flying knee of death. No. Oh. Alright, last chance. Oh, so close. Grab him. Got him. Just in the nick of time. That's all for this episode, folks. Thanks for watching SNES Drunk Plays Final Fight. Have a great rest of your day.